I'm gonna tell you eight things that you need to avoid as a YouTuber because they might result in you losing your channel. And we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick from TuberTools.com. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. A lot of work goes into a YouTube channel, especially if you've been doing it for a while. And there are a lot of things that people are overlooking on a regular basis and I wanna bring them to your attention right now. So listen, watch this entire video because there's gonna be some of these that are basic and then there's gonna be other ones to where you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that I had to do that. I need to fix that right now. Number one, using copyright protected clips and images in your videos and or your thumbnails. I see tons of channels doing this. And if you're using copyright material, you are running a risk of having problems. Yes, there is fair use, but just because you're putting a video on YouTube does not make it fair use. There are all types of technicalities involved in fair use in terms of if you can or cannot use something. So it's extremely important that if you can, with if the content that you're making supports it, that you do not upload anything that has any type of copyright attached to it. That includes using movie stars and things like that in your thumbnails. And the reason for that is if you pull something off of Google Images as an example, if the owner of that image happens to run across that, on YouTube, then they can file a claim against you if you're using it in your thumbnail. Depending on your argument, you may or may not get a copyright strike because of it. Depending on your argument, you may or may not go to court over it. So it's very important to make sure that you have the rights to everything that you're using. Number two, using official logos in your thumbnails. YouTube is extremely serious about content creators misleading their users. Let me give you an example. If you are a music channel, and this is actually why I added this to the list, because I see a lot of music channels doing this. If you're a music channel and you're using a Vivo logo in your thumbnail because you're trying to tap into the traffic that Vivo gets and you are in no way associated with Vivo, you're misleading people. Of course, do what you like, but I recommend that you go through all of your thumbnails that are using that logo or any other logo that's directly related to somebody else on YouTube that you're trying to siphon traffic from. Go through all of your thumbnails and get that logo out of there. Next up on the list is affiliate linking without adding a disclaimer to your description, letting people know that they're affiliate links. This is another one that I see tons of people doing. They're doing review channels. They're doing all this stuff to where they're like, hey, I'll just put links to my camera gear down in the description. That's cool and that's awesome to do that for the sake of generating extra money. But if you do not have that disclaimer down there, you might get yourself in trouble. So make sure that you add an affiliate disclaimer in your description. If you're doing any type of affiliate promotion whatsoever. This one is gonna sound extremely obvious, but I have to mention it because there's a lot of myths flying around about it. It is not okay to use even one second of a song that is copyright protected. There's all of these myths about, well, if I just put it out for one second or if I do five seconds or if I do do under a minute, then it's okay. That is absolutely not the case. You cannot, you do not ever have permission to use copyright protected tracks. Well, unless of course you actually get legal permission, you get a license to use that track, then, then you can. Now, if you are looking for music that you can use in your videos, I recently made a video that you can check out right up here that's gonna show you five different places that you can get music to use in your videos. Next up on this list is giveaways. If you are doing giveaways, you have to add specific things to your description official rules, how you're gonna use the data that you collect on the users and things like that. I'll actually put a link to the information you need to know down in the description, but a lot of people, they're running these giveaways, but they're not putting the right information down in the description. And in most cases, they're not putting any information at all. And it's not because they're bad people. It's just because like a lot of this list, they just don't know. All of this stuff, it can be technical sometimes. Of course, and I'm not even gonna spend more than just a mention on this one, but buying views and subs, that's definitely a no-no. Just in case you don't know, you can lose your channel because of that. And regardless of what the service tells you in terms of, oh, well, you know, we send real users and stuff like that, you can lose your channel. Don't do it. This next one is overlooked because it might seem like nothing wrong is happening, but you can lose your channel because of it. Sub for sub request, and it doesn't matter what mathematical equation that you put to it in terms of plus one like is two subs and two comments is a third sub and then three subs is a equals comment. Whatever. 
People think they're clever, but they're not. It is repetitive, unwanted comments, AKA spam. And if you practice that, not only can you get shadow banned initially, but you can also end up losing your account over it if too many people report you for spam. In addition to those, there's other terms of service violations that you may or may not be aware of. I'm actually gonna tell you a little story about something that happened to me recently. When I first started my channel, I made a video about how to go into YouTube and get thumbnails so you can archive them for personal use, pull them down for videos and things like that. I put disclaimers in it. I mentioned that you should only do this for personal reasons and things like that. However, because now that I'm further down the road, now that I know what's going on, now that I know what the rules are, I should have went back and looked through all of my videos, combed through everything to make sure that I was compliant, but I didn't. And because of that, I got a community guideline strike on my account. Now I got it taken care of. It's no longer there. It's that whole thing is gone. But the fact is that it's very important to make sure that not only are you compliant now with what's going on, but you need to go back through your old videos and make sure that you're still compliant with stuff that you uploaded a very long time ago. It can happen to all of us. As Beanie and Doug know, the ban hammer is strong, right? And that applies to YouTube and us as well. So make sure that whatever it is that you're doing here on the platform, that you're compliant with all of the rules. I'm gonna actually put a link in the description to the YouTube Terms of Service so you can make sure that you go down there and you check that out so you can protect yourself. I'll put some additional resource material down there as well, just so you can make sure that you're playing by the rules and you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be doing so that your channel doesn't get deleted. And if you want to learn more about growing your channel, making videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.